This world is all about branding and marketing. The number one branders in the universe is the United States. They made the United States seem like it's the best place in the world to be. It's the land of the free, home of the brave. I go there to find and chase my dreams. We have to be able to tell our own stories. Directors, filmmakers, entertainers, it's going to be clearly, and the press, it's going to be your job to redefine how people think about Africa. Because you're here, you see what's going on. You clearly can see in a vivid picture the good, the bad, and the ugly. What you choose to put out there is what the world is going to get. Because I can tell you right now, in Chicago alone, there's more people dying in Chicago than there was in the war in Iraq. But you would never see that. There's a lot of things that's happening in the U.S. that you would never see because they choose to show you what they want you to see for... Yeah. It's about country integrity. You have a certain reputation you have to keep. No one puts their family business out into the street. The, one of the problems we have in Africa is that when something happens, the press is quick to put out negative energy and quick to put out a negative story. And then that story goes on to internet and other broadcasting systems take it and they post it. So when you look at places like Kenya, for instance, that I know of maybe what, two terrorist attacks? But it was everywhere. So now people was afraid to go to Kenya because somebody shot up the mall. But then when you look online, there was over 25,000 attacks in the US, but you only knew about maybe five or six. So we have to really rebrand. And then when you look at how the world perceives Africa, they're right, you know, you see zebras, Lions, tigers, bears, oh my. You get to the point where you think Africa's just a big jungle. The images that they're showing of Africa is historical images. This is way before civilization. This is when they were still, you know, battling with spears, like times of Shaka Zulu. <laughs> no, I'm serious. But then when you look at the US, they're showing Superman, Batman, You know? Where is our Superman? Where is our, like, Shaka Zulu should be a superhero today. <laughs> really? So we have to tell our own stories. I mean, even Jesus is white. <laughs> and you believe it. But it's okay, because how you were framed, if you taught something from the day you were born, and your mother taught you that, your father taught you that, it's real. You never look at your mom and your dad as liars. But their mother and father taught them the same thing. Because that's the kind of history that's put out for them to believe. Our history books in the U.S. is all white American history. Culture that's been borrowed from other nations. But Africa have to teach the same history of our ancestors. The great things that they have accomplished. You know? And it's going to be the jobs of directors like yourself, filmmakers like yourself, to narrate that story. How do we want to be perceived? How do we want that story to be narrated to the rest of the world? This younger generation, we kind of figured it out. Because now, when you look at hip hop in America, every rapper is rich. Gold chains, Bentleys, night girls, you know, nice girls by the pool with bathing suits in this big mansion. And then, when the video is over, they get on their phone and call an Uber. They don't even come in the Bentley that you just saw in the TV. But you go to Nigeria, we got WizKid, Davido, P Square, all these guys driving a Bentley, Mercedes. They actually own those cars. <laughs> That's the difference. But if we don't translate that, they will never know. They think we're going to leave the shoot and go home on a horse or a zebra. Because <laughs> that's what they know. This is why African Americans are so afraid of Africa. You mention Africa, they start shaking. There's so much fear. 
They don't know how to translate that. It was just recent that people are now saying, yeah, man, you know what? I rock with Africans, man. You know what I'm saying? I want to do some collaborations, man. Yo, man, I need an Afrobeat remix. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but before, they would be like, man, I don't know that dude. I'm not putting him on my record. <laughs> so the younger generation is slowly understanding how you have to rebrand the culture because the culture has adapted. They've actually took everything that we've created and made it look better. They made a superstar look like a superstar. When I look on TV and I see our biggest entertainers, they don't look like stars. That's why you can't really respect the entertainer. If a politician saw a singer, he'd just be like, oh, he's just a local singer. But if he go to that local singer's performance, he may sell out the stadium because he has a huge influence, but the image is not there. So we have to take the image as a huge accountability for ourselves and realize that Africa really does have a reputation. But if we allow our stories to be told, our stories will be told according to their agenda on what they need to be able to benefit from Africa. So we have to tell our story so we can be able to understand how we can utilize that story to benefit for our agenda. You know? So in closing, the, this job is for the entertainers, the filmmakers, the reporters, and anyone that creates content. We have to rebrand, and we have to rebrand it in the way that we see it and tell the story to where they can understand it, feel comfortable, and want to come here and invest.